Manchester United have just beaten Liverpool at Old Trafford. Now, first of all, I have to say, uh, sorry this video wasn't out earlier, but I just couldn't face doing it. I couldn't, like... First of all, we have to give credit to Man United. They were very good, right? They weren't unbelievable, but they were good. And this is a huge step forward for them and for Ten Hag. And I think they put in a good performance against us. But today we're going to focus it from a Liverpool point of view. I'll give my player ratings, but let's talk about Liverpool. Disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. Every one of those players should be embarrassed right now. Against the old enemy, and no player, apart from maybe one or two, put up a real fight that game, right? Luis Diaz, I would say, was the only one running around and actually trying to do some stuff, right? At least he showed fight. But the rest of this squad, absolutely terrible, right? Where's the fight? Where's the spirit? Where's the style? Where's the management? All absolutely terrible, right? The performance for the first goal, I don't know what Gomez was doing, right? People blame Van Dyke for that one, and yes, Van Dyke wasn't particularly good, but I think that was Gomez's fault. Gomez really should have done better. And where was Trent? Bro, Trent was at the halfway line. Genuinely. I know he can attack, but this is the problem. If at least Fabinho had started and Henderson could cover for Trent when Trent goes forward. But like this, you had Elliot, who's not defensively minded, to try and cover for Trent, and that was never going to work. He's 19 as well, right? And he was good, but... Jurgen Klopp got his starting 11 wrong. Fabinho should have definitely played, and I would have started Simicass over Robertson. We're going to get to my player ratings. Robertson was terrible. Right, he was terrible. But, honestly, like, I don't know what we did that was good. Right, the first goal... Obviously, as I just said, mistakes from our entire defence... The second goal, we tried to play the offside trap. And again, Van Dyke was there. Um, I think he was the one that technically played him on side, although it was offside. But honestly, they deserved it. I'm not even mad that that goal, which was probably offside, counted. I, I don't, we did not deserve a thing. And I think that if we drew this game and if we scraped through it, we wouldn't learn as much as if we lost. Now that we lost, I think that Klopp can really try and improve us again. Whereas if it was a draw, but yeah, it's fine, we're drawing. So I think it's fine. Salah scored. It was a good header, right? I mean, what can I say? Salah was absolutely nowhere for the, for the first 80 minutes. And then, boom, he turns up and he scores. Like, genuinely, this guy is Superman. Even when the entire team is playing terribly, even when he's playing terribly... He finds a way to score. I, I, like, who does that? So he was actually a bright spark and he will win the gold of move, let's be real here. He's absolutely phenomenal. And he might even get top assists because we'll get onto his chances created. But particularly our defence and even more so our midfield. Big, big trouble. And we need, we need Thiago Alcantara back. This game just showed how much we miss Thiago Alcantara. Because Bobby Firmino was trying to take the Thiago role of being the creative midfielder. But then we didn't have anyone up front. Bobby Firmino was playing like a six. But Harvey Elliott couldn't cover for Firmino's position. And Milder and Henderson certainly can't. Right? We're missing Jota. I mean, look at our bench. Nat Phillips, Vandenberg, Clark, Stefan Bajetic, Adrian, Simakas. Genuinely... The only difference maker when you're losing that can come on is Fabio Carvalho because Fabinho's defensive. And Fabio Carvalho is 19, for God's sake. Right? You can't just make him be the only one. And yes, injuries are a problem. But signings. FSG. Get your money together and sign some players, for goodness sake. Bring in Moises Caicedo. Bring in Yuri Tielemans. Give me Bellingham. Give me Ben Asser, Give me anybody. Right? I don't care how good they are. I don't care. Right? I don't care if they're not going to work. I don't care if they're not going to work. It's better than this. Right? So at least do something, for goodness sake. But let's get to the player ratings. Goalkeeper, Allison, I've given him a five. Wasn't particularly amazing. 89% accurate passes during the game, so he didn't make too many mistakes on that point. And I don't think he could have done anything for any of the goals. 
two diving saves, two saves inside the box, acted as a sweeper once. He was good, and I would say he's still the best goalkeeper in the in the world, let alone the league, because, I mean, we, if he's not the best goalkeeper in the league, then I don't know who is, because everyone's having a shocker. So he's doing... I don't expect him to do anything for those two goals, and I thought he was okay. Right back, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Three out of ten. Not good enough, bro. Like, genuinely not good enough. This guy, he was dribbled past once. He was missing for the first goal, missing for the second goal. And he doesn't track back quickly enough. And yes, for me, he's still the best right back in the world. He's had a bad start to the season. He's still a phenomenal player. And people calling him to be sold, they need to calm down. Because the real problem is the midfield. If we had a defensive midfielder that could cover for Trent, then Trent would be fine. We just didn't have that. Going forward, he was actually good. Two chances created, took some corners, 92 touches of the football. And he wasn't bad there, but for those goals, I, I hold him partly accountable. Virgil van Dijk. Now, you'll rarely see me criticise Van Dijk because he is the best defender in the world and has been for a very long time now. But last night just wasn't good. Four out of ten. Like, and I know people saying he hasn't had a good start to the season and now he's terrible and stuff. Okay, Fulham was okay. I thought he was actually good against Palace. But to, like, 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 the last game was absolutely horrendous against Man United, Right. That first goal, again, you saw what happened between him and Milner. They were arguing at each other, you know. Milner was telling him to do his job and stuff. Van Dijk, he wasn't amazing, was he? Like, 84% accurate passes. I just don't I just don't know what's happened, what happened against Man United. And I think that he's still the best defender in the world and we can, like, calm down his one performance. The entire team was terrible. But... He needs to take some responsibility and stop being soft and go into those challenges. Joe Gomez, three. I mean, is there much to explore with Joe Gomez? I think it was probably his fault for the second goal and the first. He was absolutely horrendous and preferably don't want to see him start for Liverpool in a while, right? He's better than that Phillips, but if that's who you're competing with, then that isn't Liverpool either. He's not Liverpool level, Joe Gomez, and I do like him, and I think he's okay to be a squad player, but not starting 11 quality at Old Trafford against the old enemy. No! Left back Andy Robertson, 3 out of 10. Could have easily been a 2. I would say the worst player on the pitch for us. He was absolutely awful. Awful. Like, play Costas. I swear. I said it after Palace. Play Costas Timakas. He's forgotten how to go forward. He's forgotten how to defend. And first two games of the season hasn't been particularly good. He was all, all right against Fulham. But apart from that, he hasn't been anything special. Right? I didn't rate his performance against Manchester United. And it could have easily been worse than a 3 out of 10. 85% accurate passes. But again, those goals. Where was he? Next, I've gone for our dear, dear captain, Jordan Henderson. 3 out of 10. I love Jordan Henderson, I think, and I think he's a good player and still starting quality for Liverpool. But you cannot play him as a six without Fabinho. It doesn't work like that. He created one chance, which was pretty good, but he just... he just I didn't see him. He, he didn't really... He didn't come back well, right? His defensive qualities weren't amazing. He only played 59 minutes, so Klopp took him off. He did have one shot, which wasn't terrible. But genuinely, he he's still good enough to be a Liverpool squad player for sure. And even starting quality at times. But he needs better players next to him. So without Fabinho, Henderson cannot start by himself without another defensive midfielder. Genuinely, he can't. He hasn't got the legs. And talking about another man who doesn't have legs, James Milner. Who created one big chance, right? One big chance. Yet, I don't know how he stayed on for 70 minutes. Three out of ten. He was not good enough. Like, and yes, he works hard for the team and he's a, and, he, and we love James Milner at Liverpool. He's a good player. But not starting quality at this stage of his career. He's 36, bro. Come on. Right. 
And at least he had a go at Van Dyke for that first goal, showing some fight and spirit, but come on, he's not amazing, is he? Harvey Elliott, one of the bright sparks. Right, I've given him a 5 out of 10. He was good. Two chances created and showing some real potential and real flourishment here. Dribble past two people, two recoveries. He was good. He was good, and I think that in his future career, he can be really... He can be good. He genuinely can be amazing. It's just whether it will happen for him, and I hope it does. But he, again, cannot cover for Trent. So he is a good player, but... And is also his best position is up in the front three. He's not going to get that chance. But he needs defensive midfielders alongside him, so he doesn't have to really defend too much. And this is why Klopp should have played Fabinho over Milner. Bloody Milner! Right, that is... No, I'm sorry. I love James Milner, but against Man United, that doesn't... What James Milner can do is come on for the last 20 minutes and sure up the team, make sure that we don't concede late on. But to start a game at Old Trafford! Old Trafford! No, get away from me. Next, we're going to go to the left. Luis Diaz. I mean, Varane absolutely destroyed him and got yellow card. Luis Diaz was one of our bright sparks. Bro, and this is what I love about him. He fights so much. He was doing Robertson's job for him again, just like against Crystal Palace. Defending, you know, where Robertson wasn't. He was so good. And he... he what I rate about him is he tries stuff. He tries to dribble people. He tries to take shots. And as we saw against Crystal Palace, he's bloody good at it, right? And today just wasn't... I mean, not, what do you mean today? I'm not even filming this on the day. That just wasn't his day. But honestly, he's a special player. And people are giving him slack, saying he's not a goal scorer and stuff. He doesn't score enough goals. Right? Like, come on. The man has five Premier League goals along with three assists. So he has eight Premier League contributions and he's played 16 games. Right? 1860. That's one in two. He'll give you one contribution every two games. Let's not mention the Champions League last season. He's played 13 games, got five contributions, four goals in the Champions League last year. He is a bloody good player. And we need we need him to do his magic. Because he is a magician. I swear, mate, remember that goal he scored against Tottenham last season? He's capable of doing that. And he scores some brilliant solo goals where he dribbles everybody and he has got talent, no doubt about it. He can be our new Mo Salah. We just need a little bit more consistency from him. But 5 out of 10. No, I said 6 out of 10, didn't I? He was decent. Roberto Firmino, 5 out of 10. He gets so much hate from Liverpool fans, right? Blaming everything on him and stuff. But one chance created. So he wasn't terrible. His expected assists was 0.4. So he's actually getting himself in good positions and he was playing as the six because Henderson and Milner were not doing their jobs. He was doing their jobs for him and then they weren't doing their cover for him because they aren't good enough to. So if Firmino can play as a midfielder, he would be so good, I swear. Get Firmino and Darwin in the same team once Darwin's back or Jota or whoever, we will be good, trust me. Firmino, 70 touches, and he was actually good. He was actually pulling up good stats. But just because people see him as a striker and he doesn't score goals makes people put hate on him. But that's not his job right now. That's not his job. We need Salah and Diaz to do that. And moving on to Mo Salah, he did it. He scored. And, bro, it was a good goal. Good header, right? He found himself in the right place at the right time. And he was good. Right, I've given him a 7 out of 10. He was good, right? And Mo Salah, genuinely, this guy, even when the entire team is playing terrible, he is always a shining light. And I thought he was as well. Scored. But the thing I'm most impressed by, four chances created in one game. In that terrible fellow was world class. He is genuinely unbelievable, right? And... Four chances created in that game. In the entire season, he's top for chances created in the league. And Liverpool sitting 16th. 13 chances created in three games. Honestly, this guy has become a more of a creator than a goal scorer. Right, we saw it post-AFCON as well. 
And I think that he could be our Riyad Mahrez, more of the the creator than the goal scorer. But then we need a goal scorer. And we haven't got one because Darwin Nunes is suspended, Diogo Jota's injured, Bobby Firmino isn't a goal scorer, and Luis Diaz is inconsistent in terms of goals, but good in terms of performances. There you go. That was my reaction to the Manchester United game. The Game Week 3 Team of the Week is also going to come out soon. Um, if Liverpool lose to Bournemouth, I will genuinely, genuinely yeet myself to the moon. Right? We need our first win. However, I hope that Klopp can take this loss as a learning curve and decide to play Fabinho. Mate, play Fabio Carvalho. I would happily see a midfield of Fabinho, Fabio Carvalho and Elliot. I'll take it. I'll take it. Just please get that first win.